You're listening to the Vox Media Podcast Network. MMA Fighting presents Timeline. Dustin Poirier versus Conor McGregor 2. January 1st, 2011. UFC 125 Resolution. Las Vegas, Nevada. The 8-1 WEC veteran, Dustin the Diamond Poirier, makes his UFC debut against top-ranked featherweight title contender Josh Grisby. In what was at the time a stunning upset, Poirier defeats Grisby by unanimous decision. Poirier would follow up this victory with another decision victory over Jason Young at UFC 131, Carwin versus Dos Santos. Was the weight cut, though, easier this time than in your debut against Grisby? Uh, actually, I think it was a little bit harder, yeah. Why? I'm not sure, you know, I've dieted for four months hard, straight. You know, I've been training my butt off for a long time for this fight. Um, maybe I put on some muscle, you know. I, I started a kind of a little bit new strength and conditioning program. I'm not sure, you know, I got here at the exact same weight as I did my last fight. Uh, but, you know, the pounds just seemed like they were a little bit tougher to come off. Why did you feel the need to, to, to drop weight classes? Well, you know, I probably fought 16 or 17 times at 155, but not nearly the level of competition that the Zufa organization has to offer. So, you know, I fought twice in WC at 155 and, uh, did well my second fight, but my debut fight at 155 in WC, you know, I fought a very strong wrestler, Danny Castillo, and that kind of opened my eyes up. You know, these guys have been, at this level, been wrestling their whole lives and fighting their whole lives, and it's just a different, you know, there's a different kind of strength these 155ers have. And now you're probably one of the bigger 145ers, so you can impose your will on the guys. Now you're 2-0 at 145. You had that massive win against uh, Josh Grisby. Where do you place yourself right now in that division? Um, You know, at the bottom. I'm, I'm still new. I'm 22 years old. It's only my uh, fourth fight in Zufa organization. You know, I want to build my name, build my uh, fan base and, and, and get better. You know, I'm still growing in the octagon. I'm nowhere near middle or higher of the, you know, of the 145 pound division. I'm just uh, a fighter out here trying to get better every fight. November 12, 2011, UFC on Fox 1, Velasquez versus Dos Santos, Anaheim, California. Poirier makes his return to the cage against veteran Pablo Garza on the inaugural Fox card. The Diamond defeats Garza by Dar's choke in the second round. You feel as though you've gone into a groove here at 145 with the weight cut, like this is the place for you? This was my easiest weight cut at 145. Um, you know, I came here at a great weight. My, my diet three months out was, was on point, you know. Uh, everything was like clockwork, you know, this time. Got off the plane at the weight I wanted, woke up every day at the target weight. Perfect. I, I got to mention, last week I had the uh, privilege to see your documentary that you starred in, Fight Phil, which was a fantastic film, and, and I recommend it to anyone out there. Um, for, for the people that don't know this journey, I mean, has this all happened very quickly for you? Because you watched that, and it wasn't that long ago that you were fighting on these small shows. Is this the sort of pace that you thought your career would go? Because right now, like I said, you're one of the top contenders, and it wasn't too long ago that you were fighting in these barnyard shows. <laughs> Literally. Uh, but. You know, it's happening fast. But if you count the days and hours that I put in, it's been a long, it's been a long road, man. Um, you know, I'm alone when I wake up in the morning when the sun's not out and I'm running three training sessions a day. You know, I can't sleep at night because I think about fighting. I wake up and watch fights. Um, I watched Pablo Garza's last fight probably a thousand times with a cup of coffee every morning for the last three months. You know, a couple times a day and. Uh, you know, I put in the work, man. I'm a hard worker, really. You know, I know a lot of guys say that and, and whatever. I mean, I'm not here to toot my own horn, but man, I put in the work and I'm very passionate about this and I care about this so much. You know, I found something that I love, you know, and I want to be the best at it. And that's what I'm trying to do. But, you know, it, it's happening quick, more quick, than, you know, quicker than I've ever, I ever imagined it could happen. February 4th, 2012. UFC 143, Diaz versus Condit, Las Vegas, Nevada. Dustin Poirier welcomes a 20-year-old Max Holloway to the UFC. Poirier defeats the prospect by submission in the first round. I, I won. It is, I'm, I'm living a dream. You know, this is my, my life, my passion. It's my career. It, it's, it's amazing. I can't, what, whatever I say doesn't do it justice. It almost seems like every time you come out there, you keep looking better, you keep looking more confident. Is that just you're getting more reps out there and now you feel like you belong in the UFC? That's exactly it. You know, now I feel at home here in the UFC. You know, when Bert starts yelling in the back, I'm ready, you know. Uh, I'm ready to go to battle. You know, I don't, the only thing, you know, I come here, I come here to fight with my heart and leave it all out there every time. I'm just, every time I step in there, I just wanted to show, you know, my hard work. I wanted to, to show through my performance. So that's, I put pressure on myself to perform well and, and, you know, show my improvements every fight. And I think I've been doing a good job of it. So you don't want the title shot just yet? No, I don't want the title shot just yet. I don't want to 
I've said it before, I don't want to sound cliche over and over, but I don't want to build myself up and fall short of the title and then back at the bottom, you know? I want to improve every fight, and when I do get the title shot, I'm going to take it, and I'm going to hold it for a long time. I just don't want to get there premature and, and, and have to work back up to it. You know, brick by brick, it's going to happen. I will be a world champion. May 15th, 2012, UFC on Fuel TV 3, Fairfax, Virginia. After a 4-0 start to his UFC career, Poirier is booked opposite the Korean Zombie as the main event. Poirier suffers his first defeat in the UFC and loses by Darce Choke late in the fourth round. Poirier would rebound with a Darce Choke victory over Jonathan Brookins later that year at the Ultimate Fighter 16 finale. However, Poirier would drop his following fight by decision against Cub Swanson at UFC on Fuel TV 7. April 6, 2013. UFC on Fuel TV 9. Musasi vs. Latifi, Stockholm, Sweden. The notorious Conor McGregor makes his UFC debut on the undercard at Stockholm, Sweden. He demolishes Marcus Brimage by KO in a little over a minute into the first round. August 17, 2013. UFC Fight Night 26, Shogun vs. Sonnen, Boston, Massachusetts. McGregor's next fight is the 21-year-old Max Holloway, at the time, the youngest fighter on the UFC roster. Even though McGregor was not the main event or even on the main card, he received a champion's walkout, entering the cage to dropkick Murphy's shipping out to Boston. The fight itself is marred by injuries to both sides, McGregor with a knee injury and Holloway with a foot injury. McGregor wins a unanimous decision. You've been the story all week here in Boston. Did you notice that you got a main event type of walkout? They followed you from the locker room with the lights down and everything. Did you notice that? Yeah, they said, they said, because Max was a little bit ahead of me and and then the guy, uh, the guy came up, no, no, Connor, you're going to walk back here. And I said, yeah, like champions. So I, I knew, you know what I mean? I feel like a champion, no? Honestly, man, put me in with anyone, anyone on the world and I'm, I'm, da I'm dangerous for them all. I'm just looking for my uh, time to prove it and it will come. Final question, we have a lot of uh, Irish fans, a lot of them waiting for this interview. Our first in person together. Yeah, Anything? Oh man, it's nice to meet you. It nice. is a pleasure. I like the check with the with the blazer, I, I like that look. You're going to see my one now, hopefully if I get the show at the press conference, you're going to see a real tree piece, you know what I mean? You're going to see style, so tune in and take notes. The support out there was unbelievable. It, it was green walking out there. The place was green. There was green flags, fucking leprechauns floating around. <laughs> it was unbelievable, you know what I mean? It was, it was brilliant. August 31st, 2013, UFC 164, Henderson versus Pettis 2, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Poirier returns to action against Eric Koch. Poirier wins by unanimous decision. December 28th, 2013, UFC 168, Weidman versus Silva 2, Las Vegas, Nevada. Dustin Poirier is matched up against Ultimate Fighter winner Diego Brandao. Poirier defeats Brandao by TKO late in the first round. The Diamond follows up that victory by defeating Akira Khorasani by second round knockout. July 19th, 2014, UFC Fight Night 46, McGregor vs. Brandao, Dublin, Ireland. After nearly a year out of the cage recovering from the knee injury suffered in the Holloway match, McGregor returns as the main event in his hometown of Dublin, Ireland. He faces the Ultimate Fighter Season 14 winner, Diego Brandao. One thing I do know is that I have a clear, clear vision that that gold belt is around my waist by the end of this year. By the end of 2014? End of 2014, and I don't know why, it's clear as day that that belt is wrapped around my waist. And these visions that I've been having, like I spoke at the start of the interview, they seem to be coming true. I seem to have a habit of predicting the future, so I will never go against that. I will, I will embrace it and encourage it. What other visions can you share with us? I mean, do you see the 155 pound title? Do you see super, anything else you can tell us? 100%. I see it all, Ariel, my friend, you know? I, I see it all, I, honestly. I, I'm, coming, I'm coming for the gold. I'm coming for all, all of it. I want, I'm taking over the game. You just sit back, sit back and relax and watch me take over the game. Considering you haven't fought in 11 months, are you almost anxious to get back in there? How would you describe your emotions just a couple of days away? I am, honestly, I am calm, composed, prepared. I have never felt better. Like I said, I feel different. 
people are saying all this pressure you know i want this illusion of pressure because i don't feel jack shit Ariel. Eh? i want more of it so when i go out there and beat this guy and make it look easy which i will do how did that guy do that let's i tell you what let's skip him let's skip the queue with this guy and that that's what it will happen often. these things don't happen often people yeah. say things people dream but it's very rare yeah. for yeah. it to all come yeah, to yeah, fruition yeah, yeah. It, it, it is pretty trippy all right i mean like the thing that i said this to you before i'd even had my debut i was going to drag them back and now here we are before the time that was set the estimated time now we're back here you know what i mean it, it's crazy how things just form dreams just form into reality but now like and then and then when, when i start getting that focus and realize no fuck, i'm gonna i'm gonna make this happen and then now that has happened i'm i'm, I'm making it happen I, I have a great relationship with my dad <laughs> like we talk all the time and i even see energy in him and i see energy in my mind like it's depressing times for a lot of people in Ireland. There's a lot of bad stuff going on in, in, in the country. A lot of people are struggling. Everybody's struggling. But now since, since them seeing me chase this dream, it's given them an energy and, and, I, and I see a new lease of life in them. And that alone spurs me on even more. So it's all just a perfect storm that is happening for me. And that is why I have this tunnel vision. And that is why I'm willing to kill every single man in my path to get that belt, you know what I mean, to, to secure the future, from my family's future. You know what I mean? That's, that's what I'm doing it for. The Notorious One defeats Brandau within a round, earning another Performance of the Night check. Journalist Kevin Ioli would go on to call this night of fights the greatest event in UFC history. Connor, I've never experienced anything like that. All my years covering this sport, is this the greatest moment of your life? Oh, without doubt, it's the greatest moment of my life. I knew, I knew, like all week, Dana and Lorenzo walking around like fanboys. You know what I mean? Really excited by this. You know, the Irish crowd, we let ourselves be heard. You know what I mean? We don't hold back, as you could tell by inside that arena. Arena. I've been to a good few events now. I've competed on some, and then I've been, I, I've been a guest at others. I've never experienced that in my life. You've even been at more, and you've never experienced it. You know, we are the Irish. We love to fight. Is Conor McGregor for real? 100% man, you know, you know for real, I'm telling people I'm gonna do it. You think now people will start believing? I don't give a shit yeah. what people say. I never did, I never do. I told you before I thought I was the shit, and I'm telling you right now I'm the shit. September 27th, 2014, UFC 178, Johnson versus Cariasso, Las Vegas, Nevada. Conor McGregor makes his Vegas debut. He is set to face top 10 ranked featherweight, Dustin the Diamond Poirier. You know it. Who looks the best up here? You know it. You know it. <laughs> That's a Rolex Sky Dweller. It's a beautiful timepiece. The shine off of that's nice. Is that part of the strategy? Keep spending the money so that you're never, never comfortable. It's my foolproof plan. Make it, blow it, make it again. <laughs> uh, at home, I can't go anywhere. You know, I get mobbed everywhere I go. It's crazy back home. There's murals that high. You know what I mean? That are all over the city now. So it, it's phenomenal. But inside the gym. Inside doors, nothing has changed. Everything is the same. I still show up, I still move fast, and I continue on this path of taking every single featherweight's head, clean off their shoulders until I get that gold. Hey, you know, I, I don't, I'm just doing my, I'm just being myself. I, I, this is who I am. I like to look good and whoop ass. It's what I do best. You know, I, I'm not, I'm not trying to be nobody but me. You know, uh, September 27th, I'm gonna rip, uh, rip Dustin's head clean off. You know, it, ma it makes no difference about nothing. Just a little pea head. Dustin thinks it's all talk. Dustin thinks it's all talk, but when he wakes up with his nose plastered on the other side of his face, he's gonna know it's not all talk. Um, his weakness is obviously his chin. You know, it, it, it's... I, look, don't get me wrong, I like the kid. He's a quiet little hillbilly from the back ass of nowhere. You know, I've nothing against the guy, you know what I mean? I'm sure he grew up in, 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 in a circus or a fair. Or, you know, he's a nice little kid. He, so. Cletus, or you know, his cousin's probably named Cletus or something. I don't know. He's a nice kid, but his chin is going to be his chin is going to be cracked, and it's going to be cracked early. And 
I don't hit like these people. He talking, I haven't got experience at, at, at the top level. You know, he's he main evented one one UFC event and lost. I main evented my hometown and it was one of the best UFC events in history. And I, and I stopped the guy inside one round. So you know, I'm I'm experienced there. Uh, he will he will know pretty pretty early that uh, that he's in over his head. He'll wake up and he'll bow before me. My confidence comes from looking around at the division. I don't see anything in the division that troubles me, not one of them. They don't move like I move, they don't think like I think, and they don't talk like I talk. That's, I, uh, that's my confidence. I mean, is there anyone in, in this room that could fill a football stadium? Is there anyone in the UFC that could fill a football stadium? I'd say there's maybe two, three max athletes that could in the UFC that could fill a football stadium, and you're speaking to one right now. So there's no doubt I, I am up there, but again, the fight must take place, the performance must be put on. So I don't read too much into it. I just embrace it and enjoy it and carry on. What do the fans want to see? And there's no denying what the fans want to see. The fans want to see McGregor in for a world title. There's no denying that. So we will see what way they play it. But I will certainly campaign for it with everything I have. And I will go at everyone in the division until I get it. Did that just take you over the edge, what transpired yesterday? Oh, no, not just that. I disliked the guy before that, but uh... Yeah, usually I don't have like, not not that I love the guys I fight, but I usually don't dislike him this much. You know, I don't like Connor. He, he's, he's an asshole. McGregor wins by knockout in under two minutes. The victory earns McGregor his second consecutive performance of the night bonus. This would be Poirier's last fight at featherweight. Of course I want that gold belt. Don't try and tell me that that gold belt sitting up right there on this table would not look great to go alongside this ivory elephant trunk suit that I have got on me right now. It would look perfect. I know Dana wants to see it. I know Lorenzo wants to see it. Shout out to Uncle Frank. I know he wants to see it. It's what the fans want. It's what I want. It's what I said. I said I was going to put him away in one round. No one's ever knocked him out. No one has ever done that to Dustin before. He's a great guy. I have nothing but respect for him. I don't just knock them out. I also picked the round. This is this is all fun and games to me. I love it. I love my job. I whoop people for truckloads of cash. How could I hate this life? I love it so much. I am grateful every single day. I don't like making this way. You know what I mean? I, I, I like fighting that lightweight. I've fought a lightweight many times in my career. I'm fast at lightweight. I come in refreshed at lightweight. It's a different, it's a different camp. It's a different. It's a different build-up when I'm fighting at lightweight than it is to fighting at featherweight. So I'm definitely open to fighting at featherweight, no doubt. I don't feel oversized by the lightweights. And um, so, definitely. Do you, do you mean your kind of spirit is different when you're at lightweight? Because you're not having to die outside. I mean, sure would your spirit not be different if you go into a steakhouse with your team and they're ordering like 64 ounce ribeyes, <laughs> rare ribeyes, marbled in delicious, delicious flavors and they're on, and it's cooked on the stone they bring it on a stone so it's actually not even cooked and the stone is sizzling and then you put the you put like butter on it and it sizzles it and cooks it and then i and then i show up can i have a chicken and i can have some salmon and spinach please that's what i'm talking about i want to show up at these places two weeks out from my fight and be like give me the 64 ounce ribeye um i have an extra of polenta um, some sweet potato mash um, and I'll also have a dessert. <laughs> that is what I want. January 18th, 2015, UFC Fight Night 59, McGregor versus Seaver, Boston, Massachusetts. With the UFC promotional machine now fully behind Conor McGregor, he is booked in his first televised main event against veteran striker Dennis Seaver. The showcase fight is booked as a step towards eventually promoting a title fight against the champion, Jose Aldo, who was flown in from Brazil to be cage side for the event. What do you make of Jose Aldo being here, watching your fight, and perhaps the idea of bringing him into the cage if you win? Yeah, uh, yeah, do it, no problem. I, I would have been in the cage in Rio, only to, he took an ass whooping, and, he, and I, I couldn't go into the cage. You know, how can I go into the cage when his face is out here and he's... But, but of course you can bring him into the cage against me because there won't be a scratch on me. There won't be a mark on my face. I'll be, I'll be almost more fresher in that octagon after the fight than Jose will be sitting in the, in, in the crowd. So bring him in and, and, and we can do it. Uh, it means nothing that he is here, you know, really. It's, the individual does not, does not matter to me, you know. 
it's always it's always the same. It's a blank face and a new body type, and it, it makes no difference. But let, let's let's do it. Let's 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 bring him in. Let's go face to face and let's let's make this. Let's 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 get this fight done. Of course, tomorrow night the Irish invasion continues. Yeah! Yeah! Notorious, Conor McGregor. That's one four five. That's championship weight. Tell Jose I'm coming. McGregor fulfills his end of the deal and demolishes Seaver, finishing him by TKO early in the second round. McGregor immediately jumps out of the cage and taunts the champion Aldo. They all think it's fun and games. I'm not playing here. And now, now it's time. Now, now we have, now we have a location. Now Jose is next in line, and he will be the next one to learn that it's not all talk and it's no joke. I said I was going to kill everybody and wipe out the division. Now we have one man left. July 11th, 2015, UFC 189, McGregor vs. Mendez, Las Vegas. After a worldwide press tour to promote Aldo vs. McGregor, Jose Aldo withdraws from the fight with a rib injury, and former number one contender Chad Mendez steps in to face McGregor on just 12 days' notice. Um, you know, my mind is absolutely bulletproof, solid as a rock. I am number one. So if you are number one, who gives a shit if number two steps out in place of number three? At the end of the day, I'm number one. So it makes no difference who is standing across the octagon from me. I will win. And of course, as you said, the fans that have come over here, you know, to make the trip from my home city to here to Las Vegas is a once in a lifetime trip for a lot of people. It takes a lot of that, a lot of sacrifice and a lot of saving up. So. Of course I was going to show up and compete regardless of who uh, who was across from me. That's why I was willing to take the 155-pound fight, the 170-pound fight. Whatever fight was available, I was going to take a fight. So I am happy to be here and I am happy to uh, be representing my country on this stage. I am happy to be given the UFC a $7.1 million gate because it is me who has given them this gate, nobody else. Realistically, realistically, Dave here shouldn't even be up here. I should be on that podium. I should be standing right there. That's, that should be my spot, and Dave, maybe you should see here, because it's me who's at the bring in all this. $7.1 million gate, highest numbers every time. We have, we have superstars singing us into the octagon. Who do you think got that? Me. Chad is a, an overblown midget. Um, tomorrow night, I'm gonna cut him in half and raise gold for Ireland, for my country. Good luck to you, sir. Conor McGregor, ladies and gentlemen. McGregor KOs Mendez with only seconds left in the second round. Conor McGregor is the new UFC interim featherweight champion. The fight also earns McGregor his fourth consecutive Performance of the Night award. It has been a hell of a ride. Two years, just over two years I'm here. I've already broke every single record in the game and it does not come easy. Trust me when I tell you there's a lot of work involved. It's not just about showing up at the gym. It's not just about that, you know, there's a lot involved. I have been living in, I haven't been home. I've been home 19 days this year. and um, I've been constantly working, constantly promoting, constantly handling my media obligations, as well as keeping on top of my weight, as well as keeping on top of my skill level, as well as managing niggling injuries. Just, it's a crazy game. And you know, I absolutely love it. I love this job, I love this game, I love this ride I'm on. And I am happy to have uh, taken the gold. It, it would not matter if it was Jose or it was Chad. This was my belt, this was my night. December 12th, 2015, UFC 194, Aldo versus McGregor in Las Vegas. Champion versus champion. Jose Aldo versus Conor McGregor. I visualize entering the contest unpredictable. I will pressure him. I will evade him. I will strike him with every limb. The knee, the heel, the fist, the elbow. I will be a ghost in there. He will think I'm there, and then I am not there. He will think I am not there, and then I am there. 
So I'm going to put on a masterpiece for this fight. This will this will prove my point that I am the number one. McGregor knocks out Aldo in 13 seconds to become the undisputed UFC featherweight champion. The loss snaps Aldo's 18 fight winning streak, spanning nine years and his 10th consecutive title defense under the UFC and WEC banner. What did Floyd and Manny do? Four, they're at 4.6 million. No, that was bias. I'm talking about gay. Oh, 72 million gay. 72 million gay. We done 10.1, I'm catching up. I'm only 27. Them old motherfuckers are 40. Before they got that on. I'm only warming up. <laughs> so, I said to Lorenzo and I said to Dana, I'm bringing these big numbers. I'm bringing these half a billion dollar revenue numbers. Like the Mayweather Pacquiao fight done. So, at 27 years of age, I stand here as the unified world champion. Back to back gate records in the MGM. This is trending as the highest pay-per-view. Schaller, I believe, said of all time for the UFC. So at 27 years of age, with every record in the book, with weight divisions above ready for me to be to go at super fights left and right. Tell me, tell me one other champion that's been like that. Every other champion gets a belt and they don't want to go up. Or they don't want to go down. I'm going straight up. So I'm bringing these big numbers and the sky is the limit. Just to clear it up, there's talk of you going up. We don't know what's going to happen, but you don't want to vacate that title. You will not vacate it. No, no, there's no way. I'm an active fighter. If I was inactive like previous champions or other champions, I'd understand vacating, but I'll go up. And by the time I win the lightweight belt, it would still only be a couple of months, but while the veteran belt is not active. So right. I am an active champion. So I will keep my belt and I will go up and add more belts. That's what we must do here. There's no vacating and that's that's not happening. I keep my belt. This is my division. Connor, in February of 2013, we spoke for the first time. You didn't have a car. You didn't have a pot to piss in. All you had were blueberries. Now here you are with the undisputed gold. Enjoy it, my friend. You deserve it. You called it. Yeah, from nothing to something to everything. So that's where I am right now. January 2nd, 2016. UFC 195, Lawler versus Condit, Las Vegas, Nevada. Now fighting at lightweight, Jorge bounces back from the McGregor loss with a victory over Diego Fajeda at UFC Fight Night 63, Mendes versus Lamas, and Yancy Medeiros at UFC Fight Night 68, Henderson versus Boach. Now 2 0 at lightweight in the UFC, Jorge is matched up against the last person to defeat McGregor, Joe Duffy. I'm a lot more mature in my fighting career than I used to be. Normally, I think I would have got burned out. When I was a featherweight, I would have overthought this fight so much and, you know, just beat myself up for six months. But I'm kind of laid back now, man. I just, uh, I'm just more relaxed with who I am and I'm having fun again. And uh, it ha hasn't really been a lot of pressure, honestly. I feel this is the smoothest fight week I've ever had and I feel like it's getting easier. How do you foresee it going down? You know, I, I really feel like I'm going to be smart in this fight and, and show all my skills. You know, I can wrestle, man. I can I can kickbox. I can box. My jiu-jitsu is good. And um, I want to show all of that. I want to show a well-rounded performance. I, I'm, a, I'm a different animal here at Lightweight. And I'm just evolving as a fighter and as a person, man. I feel great. And um, there's not a spot that this fight can go that I won't be comfortable. And I'm going to show that. Poirier wins by unanimous decision. Yeah, you know, I thought his boxing was going to be good, and it was. I knew he had a good ground game, a lot of submissions on his record. Um, I, I executed the game plan me and my coaches had. I stayed in his face, put him against the fence, and, and grinded on him, you know, got him tired, and, and that was the game plan. Yeah, uh, when I got off the stool for the second round, I couldn't breathe at all through my nose. I just got back from the hospital. It was broken in two spots. So, uh, you know, I just did what I had to do, took him down and, and took advantage of that. What do you think makes sense next for you? I think there's a lot of fights out there that make sense, man. Uh, my goal was to crack the, the top 10 last year, and that didn't happen with the fight falling out. Hopefully, I'll be up there now, and I uh, want top 10 opponents. March 5th, 2016, UFC 196, McGregor versus Diaz, Las Vegas. Originally booked as Dos Anjos versus McGregor for the lightweight title, the lightweight champ, Dos Anjos, suffers a foot injury and is forced to withdraw from the card. 2015 was my year. 2016 is also my year. Every year is my fucking year. With only a little over a week until the fight, 
Top 10 lightweight Nathan Diaz is selected to be McGregor's new opponent. The new main event will be contested at welterweight. I'm gonna play with him. Now, he's, his, his entries and his exits, his retreats, his feints, his patterns are all identical. He can't break out of his set routine, so um, he's very, very predictable. I think the speed, you know, people gave Jose the speed advantage. But that was a mistake. I, when the fight began, I had the clear speed advantage. I was light on my feet, zipped in and out. I think it will be very, very evident, the speed difference. I also know he's, he's heavy on his lead foot, but really now he's like an injured gazelle and he's more heavy on his left foot. So these are, these are subtle tales that I, I tell. So I'm going to go in and play with him. There are many, many shots. The Maya Lua, the 360 roundhouse. A soft body on him. He has a he has a soft, flabby body, like he was a fat guy. That you got it all skinny. figured out, but who do you train with? He's a soft. You have no training. It doesn't partners. matter. You you have no again, boxing. you again, you you're trying no to pass the line. No like, I train with this guy. Look at him. Go video him. Get that camera away from me. Got tapped out That's by a two sign of a man who's scared for his life. Of. Man up and be yourself. Right. You're so. like you're like a gazelle. You're a little bunched up together, hoping hoping you that you get spared. But I'm a lion. You knocked out midgets. I'm a lion in there and Short, I'm gonna eat you alive. People. Your little gazelle friends are gonna be staring through the cage looking at you getting getting your carcass getting eaten alive and I'm they can do nothing. Out, all they're gonna do is say, no we're never partner, gonna cross this river again. Where's your boxing? Who, who do you train with? You got that little goofy motherfucker with you? You got that skinny I'm training for real. No, I got a real training bitch at the real kid, real training Who do partner. you train with? Top I'd slap the head off your whole team one by boxers. one. You and your big brother. Top 10 you, you big guys. Brother. Top 10 kickboxers. You don't got, you're playing touch butt with that dork in the park. The ponytail. And I'm the one who ain't got no training partner? I don't think so. You seem to have it all figured out when you're fighting midgets. You got shit. Bring, bring your training partners in. You're gonna need them. My whole team will fucking beat your whole team's ass. How about that? <laughs> Nate Diaz defeats Conor McGregor by second round rear naked choke. Um, you know it's a it's a bitter, bitter pill to swallow. Um, I I, t I took a shot. I went went at it. Um, I feel. I was simply ineff inefficient with my, my energy. Usually, I fight a man in in the division I am champion in, and they they crumble under those shots. Um, but Nate took them very well. The big the the weight, I think, allowed him to take those shots well. So I think with a little bit of uh, an adjustment and a recognition that the bigger man, you must be a bit more efficient with your striking. You must not put everything into the shots. Um, but I was simply inefficient with my energy. I made some errors. Um, you know, hats off to Nate, he fought very well. He stayed in there. A lot of people have crumbled under the shots and his range was um, a factor. My right, my left hand was falling short sometimes. The wheel kicks didn't really, my wheel kicks weren't. I threw them and missed them one, once or twice, maybe hit a glove and I think they done more to my energy than they did to his energy. And it was simply a, battle of energy in there and I and he got the better of that so yeah this is this is the game we win some we lose some I will never shy away from a challenge I will never shy away from um, defeat or you know this is this is part of the game so I'm happy to come out there continue and stay in this fight I had many chances to not uh, do, do this and, and sit and wait but um, I went in I, I took I took the fight and it didn't pay off. This is the fight business. It's another day. I'll come back. June fourth, twenty sixteen, UFC one ninety nine, Rockhold versus Bisbing two, Inglewood, California. Dustin Poirier fights lightweight veteran Bobby Green. Um, you also recently signed a new contract with the UFC, right? Yeah. And there was some talk that you would test free agency, but you didn't do that. Why did you decide to sign before going into free agency? I uh, had fun, one fight left, yeah. and I didn't want the pressure of, um, you know, you take big risks, risks, you get big rewards. So that was in my head the whole time I was negotiating and, and like, maybe I should fight this last one, get another big win, and then I'll be, you know, my wife's pregnant right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, in two months, we're going to have our first child, and I didn't, I didn't want to go into the last fight of my contract with that in my mind and that I have, you know, this is, I have to win this fight to get a better contract or I'm taking steps back and all that. I wanted to have more security. So I signed the contract and, and here we are. You happy with it? Yeah. I mean, of course I want more money. Yeah. 
uh, but I'm happy. The Diamond wins by first round knockout. August 20th, 2016. UFC 202, Diaz versus McGregor, Las Vegas. Originally booked as the main event for UFC 200, the UFC rebooks the highly anticipated rematch between Nate Diaz and Conor McGregor as the main event for UFC 202. People criticize Team Diaz for leaving the press conference. Just over here, what do you think from a professional standpoint? Like I said, fuck Team Diaz. And if you're down with Team Diaz, then fuck you too. Connor, this is a huge fight. Perhaps the most important fight of your career. Give us your thoughts on this rematch. He should have killed me when he had the chance, because now I'm back and I'm going to kill you and your whole fucking team. You and them bitch kids. Conor McGregor wins the five round war by majority decision. The grudge match is believed to be the highest selling pay per view in UFC history. It was a hell of a fight. I feel I have more skills. Um, but boy, is he one tough motherfucker. He keeps on walking forward. He took every shot. I dropped him multiple times. He just keeps coming. His face was bust open and he's still coming forward. But um, I learned from the last contest. I stayed calm. I bounced the shots off, sh off my shoulders. I stayed tight in the pocket. I knew I was going to have that moment where he was going to be in my face and dig his uh, forehead under my chin and start unloading. So I caught shots and, and deflected shots and then hit him to the body a couple of times and it turned the momentum again in my favor. But it was a hell of a fight. Um, he's a hell of a competitor. The whole, the whole lot of it brought out the best of me. It forced me to look at myself truly. I'm just very, very happy with everything. It was a hell of a camp, a hell of a preparation. And we got it done tonight. It was not easy, it was a war. I'm happy it went that way. Um, I got to show my heart in there. Um, I took it to him and, and, and I stayed in it and, and got the win, so I'm very happy with it. You know, I, I don't care what anyone says, I helped bring this game to another level. You can, you can deny, they can deny that all they want, but I did. Like, look at Nate's pores tonight, look at Nate's pores after the fourth fight, look at everyone's, everyone's game has gone up, money was. Um, and I helped do that. So after that fight when I lost, and I'm looking at all these people and they're all celebrating my demise and saying I'm done and this and... Um, it, it certainly lit a fire under my belly. Every single person doubted me. Every single fighter doubted me. Doubt me now. September 17th, 2016. UFC Fight Night 94. Poirier versus Johnson. Hidalgo, Texas. Poirier is booked in the main event opposite top-ranked Michael Johnson. Dustin Poirier has his lightweight winning streak snapped after a brutal knockout one minute and 35 seconds into the first round. Poirier would bounce back with a decision victory over Jim Miller at UFC 208, home versus Durandamy. November 12, 2016. UFC 205, Alvarez versus McGregor, New York City, New York. The featherweight champ, Conor McGregor, will face the lightweight champ, Eddie Alvarez, in an attempt to be the first UFC fighter to hold two UFC belts in two weight classes simultaneously. Sonny, I'm late. I just don't give a fuck! Uh, Connor, this question's for you, Connor. Connor McGregor. Connor.
I feel Eddie. I've nothing against Edward. Careful. Him. Be careful. I've nothing against Edward. Oh, well. Oh, well. Be careful. What you gonna do? Oh, well. You gonna do something over there? Be careful. Shut your fucking mouth. <laughs> I run New York. I run this whole shit. And Mystic Mac predicts I'm gonna KO, KO you inside one round. Is a win enough for you in this fight, or are you looking to make a specific statement? No, no, I came for an apology from him. I want an apology for saying my wife and kids. Suck these Shit. big Irish balls! <laughs> if you don't apologize, then I'm gonna make them bad. I'm gonna give you a chance to apologize. You apologize to me. Is he big Irish balls all in your face? McGregor knocks out Alvarez in the second round becoming the UFC lightweight champion and the UFC's first fighter to hold two belts in two weight divisions concurrently. And then and then that's it, they've got to come talk to me now because no one's came talk to me since the sale has happened. Um, as, a, as a businessman, I've been approached as hello and, and that type of stuff, but I've earned, I've earned something. I've earned, like, I mean, who owns the company now? There's, there's, there's people have shares in the company, uh, celebrities, Conan O'Brien owns the UFC nowadays, so where's my share? Where's my equity? If, if I'm the one that's bringing this, if, if I, I mean, they've got to come talk to me now. That's all I know. I've got boat belts, a chunk of money, a fa family, little family on the way. You want me to stick around? You want me to keep doing what I'm doing? Let's talk, but I want ownership now. I want equal share. I want, I want what I deserve, what I've earned. So, yeah. Um, there's a little announcement for you. Look, it feels, it feels great. Um, it feels familiar. I saw it so clearly. I swear to God, I saw it so clearly, so consistently, until it just, until it's here in reality. So, I've been saying this a long time. Um, I'm very confident in in my abilities and what I'm predicting I'm going to do. And, um, and I back it up. I back I back it up with work ethic. I back it up with hours upon hours of my of time and dedication. I never slip. I never take a second off this game. So. Um, I'm very, very uh, satisfied, very grateful, very happy, but not surprised. You know what I mean? I, I knew it. I knew it was going to happen for me. May 13th, 2017, UFC 211, Miocic versus Dos Santos 2, Dallas, Texas. Poirier is matched up against former UFC and Bellator lightweight champion Eddie Alvarez. As far as this matchup is concerned, I mean, he just fought on one of the biggest fights of all time against uh, McGregor at MSG, loses in, in dramatic fashion, then comes back with you. Were you surprised when they gave you Eddie? This is a big, I mean, it's a high profile fight, right? Where, what was your reaction? Well, I was gonna, <clears throat> I was gonna chill out for a little bit and hang out with my daughter and stuff. And then I told him I was, I was gonna come back a few months later, uh, unless they had a big fight for me and then this, they ended up coming up with Eddie's name, and I was like, let's go, I'll fight whenever. Uh, this is a great opportunity for me, you know. He's one fight removed from being the world champion, like you said. I go out there and finesse Eddie Alvarez on Saturday night. It shows the world the caliber of fighter I am. In the highly entertaining bout, Alvarez and Poirier fight to a no contest due to an illegal knee strike by Alvarez. I'm dying to get your thoughts on the Eddie Alvarez versus Dustin Poirier fight because yeah. for the second pay-per-view in a row, a bit of controversy surrounding an illegal knee. This time, Alvarez lands two illegal knees um, here in Texas. They have not adopted the new rules, so all you need is one hand on the ground um, if, if your knee is on the ground as well in order for it to be illegal if, yeah. the, if the, the strike lands. And that was the case for Dustin Poirier. But... Referee Herb Dean, he decided that the strike wasn't intentional, so as a result, he ruled it a no contest. This has been hotly debated, controversial. Some think it should be a DQ. Eddie should have lost. What do you think should have been done? I, I personally think it should have been a DQ. I don't feel strongly about it, mm -hmm. and I wouldn't argue against the no contest. But the the justification for the no contest is interesting to me, right? Because it's it's not it's it, it's intent. It's all intent. Uh, you know, he says that's an accidental knee. But when he says that, he doesn't mean that he didn't mean to throw the knees. He means that Eddie didn't mean to throw an illegal strike. Mm -hmm. And at that point, we're just predicting what's in Eddie's head, sure. and it, and we're getting into a weird gray zone. But just in general, well, the one thing that stood out to me for that fight, I mean, I, I do the pros react column for. Our 
our mm. for our website. And if you look at the pros react column for that fight, most of it were professional UFC fighters, all of whom were saying, I don't know the rule, more or less. Mm. They were, there was people saying that's legal. There were people saying that's not legal. There were people saying they just didn't know that whether what it was at all and they didn't know the rule. And I think that's more telling than anything that we need to get this figured out. Corey would bounce back from this no contest with a main event victory over another former UFC champion, Anthony Pettis, at UFC Fight Night 120 in Norfolk, Virginia. August 27th, 2017. Mayweather versus McGregor, Las Vegas, Nevada. In what many labeled as the biggest fight in combat sports history, the UFC, for the first time ever, allows a fighter under contract to participate in a professional boxing match. Conor McGregor is booked to make his professional boxing debut against the 49-0 Floyd Money Mayweather. Does this mic work? Well then, fuck that mic! On the count of three, I want everyone in this arena to scream at the top of your lungs, fuck the Mayweathers! One, two, three! No, 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 no. We can do better than that. When I count the tree, I want this entire arena to scream, fuck the Mayweathers. One, two, three, fuck the Mayweathers. He won't do shit. Do fucking nothing. Well, for the longest time, we thought it wouldn't happen. In fact, as recently as tonight, it still kind of felt surreal that Floyd Mayweather and Conor McGregor would box inside a ring in front of a crowd in Las Vegas and people would actually be able to pay to watch this happen. But it happened, my friends. It actually happened. And in the end, Floyd Mayweather won via 10th round TKO. It was an entertaining affair. Conor McGregor did a hell of a lot better than many boxing pundits thought. It was a good fight. I smoked him the early rounds. I thought I'd bust you up the early rounds, but I tell you what, you're one composed individual. Um, you didn't get rattled. You tucked in when you needed to tuck in. I thought you, you switched up your game plan three times. <clears throat> you came out looking to box. I thought you were being outboxed early on. You looked to play against the ropes like you looked to play. You were getting picked off there. And then you came in, hands, hands up towards your forehead, dipped in hit forehead on the chest, and started to fight that kind of fight. I didn't anticipate that. Three, three game changes in the, in the fight. That's what a true champion does. Much respect, you, 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 you came with it. You know what I mean? I gotta give respect to that. It was a hell of a fight. I would have liked to see the, the, the end of the tent. I think fatigue, there's like a patch. There's a patch somewhere in, in the middle of fights, even with the Diaz 2 fight. I have this patch where I must overcome. I get a little wobbly and I start kind of, but it's more fatigue and I can't, if you look at the Diaz 2 fight, I came through that, came back round four, round five. I would have liked him to see round, the end of round 10 and see where it brought us, but hell of a competitor. Switched it up, kept the pressure. You've got to give your hat off to, to, to Floyd. A hell of a career, congratulations. Yeah. It was a good fight. It was a bit of fun, right? <laughs> it was a bit of fun. April 14th, 2018, UFC on Fox 29, Poirier versus Gaethje, Glendale, Arizona. Poirier is booked in the main event against top-ranked Justin Gaethje. Is there a certain level of mental preparation you have to go through too and sort of conditioning yourself of like a guy with a guy like Justin, I, Eddie talked about it before, of like stealing himself, like knowing that he's going to go into a war type of situation? Yeah, like I know uh, there's going to be some times in this fight where, you know, it's going to be, you know, tough. It, it's going to, I'm going to have to dig down. That's going to present itself. It might present itself often. I don't know, but I'm prepared mentally for Whatever it takes. Like I said, I'm willing to leave a piece of myself in there to get the victory Saturday night. In a fight of the year contender, Poirier defeats Gaethje by KO early in round four. Uh, Tiago Alves, before we walked out there, said when he gets too happy with that leg kick, let's plant and throw something down the middle. And uh, that's what we did, you know, but I, I took too many of them. There's no, you know, I, 
even if that was the plan to, to sit down and take shots, I need to absorb them better or change my angle to where they're not flush and uh, lifting my body off balance and stuff like that. Uh, I need to make some adjustments on my end. Honestly, this whole camp, I, I expected him to throw outside leg kicks. So I watched the Michael Johnson fight a few times and uh, he was switch kicking a lot. And he really didn't throw a whole lot inside on Michael Johnson. And that's what I expected. So it was just a, a different, different fight than I thought it was gonna be when it comes to leg kicks. I wanna fight for gold, man. I'm not chasing rematches with Connor, rematches with Eddie, rematches with anybody. That's not my goal. My goal isn't to get even with these guys. My goal is to prosper and be a world champion and and make money and retire and say I did it. Uh, you know, I just want to go to sleep with that belt around my waist one night and tell my wife I did it. Well, you know, years and years ago, like in 2006, my wife was. I didn't have a car. She would drive me to weigh-ins. We would sleep in broken down motels, and then I would fight the next day, just me and her. You know, and. Uh, I just want to say I did it, man. July 28, 2018. UFC on Fox 30. Alvarez versus Poirier 2. Calgary, Alberta. Poirier is once again booked in a rematch with Eddie Alvarez as the main event. It's it's happening. You know, uh, it's happening. I'm, I'm excited, man. I'm grateful every morning I wake up happy and grateful that I'm here, that Eddie's here, that we got him here, and that we got 25 minutes to find out who the better man is. In a wildly entertaining and violent fight, Poirier defeats Alvarez by knockout four minutes into the second round. Weird thing is, man, when I had the guillotine, he was trying to like drive up my body. He stuck his finger in my ear and was like pulling my head down and the ref warned him and then he put his finger right back in my ear. So, I mean, this is an old dog who knows a lot of tricks and I don't want to say somebody's a dirty fighter, but first fight you need me, second fight you try to elbow me illegally, and you give me a wet willy. There's gotta be, we gotta draw the line somewhere. Thanks, Dustin. Uh, even though he stuck his finger in my ear tonight, man, he penetrated my ear. I, uh, I, I, still, I still respect the guy now, uh, because we spoke out back after the fight, and he said a couple things to me that, uh, you know, I, I respect the guy. October 6th, 2018. UFC 229, Habib versus McGregor, Las Vegas, Nevada. After a nearly two year absence from the UFC, the former two division champion, Conor McGregor, is set to face the lightweight champion, the undefeated Habib Nurmagomedov, as the main event for UFC 229 at the T-Mobile Arena. They were chased from their land. They were chased from their land to the edge of cliffs. My family, my bloodline, the McGregor clan, we stood and we fought. We fought the English Empire. So much so that we, our name was banished for 100 years by King James at the time. Okay, okay, why, why you guys change your language? Shoot okay, your you, mouth. You guys said shoot your, your own language. Mouth. What's wrong with you? Now you're talking about we, you, you guys fight the English Empire. Oh, I can't come do it with your language. Language. Hey, talk English. I can speak yeah. Irish, mate. I can, I can, I can speak my native okay, tongue. Okay, let's go. I can talk with you. I can't 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 talk with you. I can talk with you. You know what that means? Can I have a show yeah. on the bus? But you, <laughs> but I wouldn't have their own language. What's wrong? English change your language? Just for Dana real quick. The decision to put the... Connor uh, bus incident from Brooklyn into the promos for, for this fight. What was that decision like? Was that tough? Was there any consideration about not doing that? No, no, hope. no. Not tough at all. It's, it's part of the storyline. It is what it is. There's been other situations where things have happened leading up to a fight and you play the story the way that the story played out. Connor, you thought, you thought it should have been in there in the promos? No comment. When, uh, Habib, same question. You're on the bus and you see all this going on. What, what is going through your head? <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. You know, this is show his weakness. He showed me his weakness. He think when he, with 40 people... I showed you my bare that, hands. Okay. First thing. Okay, I'm... Uh, Here's my hands. Like... No weapons. Two of Get five. off the bus, mate. Okay, two of you five. Talked you talked all this remember? talk. When you're doing all these actions. Backstage. Here I am with no bus. Uh, with no, with, he with was a no very way. nice guy. With no, he was uh, very nice no guy, weapons. But when he come with 40 people, he a little bit changed. But this is show his weakness. Me and him is going to be alone. 6 October. And, and that's it. 
The Chechen people know what I'm talking about it. when I call this man a coward. When I call this father oh. a quivering coward. Which, which Chechen? The, him and Kadyrov were at a, at a mosque together. And he posts a picture of Kadyrov on his Instagram site. Kadyrov is a Chechen dictator, a, 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 a crazy man, don't get me wrong. But K Khabib's father, lick arse, lick arse of fucking Hulahan, posts a picture of Kadyrov at this mosque. And, he, and, and uh, Khabib's uh, father posts a picture of... The caption is "Together we are stronger." It, it, it's it's such fake respect out of fear. No, uh, it's no, it's no, no, uh, no. the Chechens no. know. The Chechen people know that if the tables were turned and there was an opportunity for his father to stab that man in the back, he would do it in a heartbeat to take over. And he did not do nothing. And that's why he is a quivering coward because he showed fake respect out of fear. And that's where that came from. I don't know what his father teach him, but my father teach me: you cannot never give up and be respect always. This is what my father teach me. And mama, mama, mama. Mama, mama, mama. Shut your mouth, mate. You're a door box. You're absolutely dirt. You just your last fight was embarrassing. Your last fight right now, was right now, embarrassing. I am most We were active. laughing in the Brooklyn and locker room. We were laughing in the right cell now. in Brooklyn. Actually. This is my third fight in last Shoy nine boy. month, you know. And 26 and all, never lose round. And I don't know what this guy talking about. I don't understand what he gonna do 6 October. He think whiskey gonna help him? I don't understand. I know a lot about you as well, you man rat. I know a lot about you as well. You keep your mouth shut here. Let me take my picture. What's up, guys? 3 p.m. This conference is beginning. I am not waiting for nobody. Let's go. If you have a question, I'm here. I mean, what's your emotion right now? The biggest star in the sport? All these people wanting to see Connor, and he's not here. I mean, what's your take on that? Listen, man, I'm excited. I can't wait for the weigh-ins. I can't wait for the fight. And uh, Con Connor's in a car right now. He's on his way here, so he'll be here in a few minutes. But yeah, I'm excited. So far, so good. Everything's been perfect, and I'm ready for the fight, man. Nurmaga Madoff would finish McGregor by submission three minutes into round four. After the victory, Nurmagomedov would climb and exit the cage and attack McGregor's cornerman, Dylan Dennis. After being restrained by security, Habib would be escorted off the arena floor without an official hand raise from the referee. I don't understand how people can talk about I jump on the cage, you know? What about he talk about my religion? He talk about my country? He talk about my father? He come to Brooklyn and he broke bus. He almost killed a couple people. What about this? What about this shit? Why people talk about I jump over the cage? Why people still talk about this? Like, I don't understand. I am respect. I, my father teach me, hey, you have to be always respectful. My old team, where I'm training in California seven years, everybody know who I am. All my friends, like everybody who know me, they know who I am, you know? And uh, I told you guys, these guys, not only him, his old team and him, they tap machines, you know, I told you guys, when you put him wrong way, he gonna tap, you know, what happened today? Like they call him two time world champion, like two weight classes, but today he tap. And that's why, Alhamdulillah, belt is here, undisputed, undefeated UFC lightweight champion. And you know, and I wanna say something like, um, you know, like people a little bit, uh, it's not people, I think it's media, media a little bit change MMA. This is respect sport, you know? This is not trash talking sport. This is respect, so like I told you before guys, I wanna change this game. I don't wanna people talk shit about like opponents, talk shit about his father, like like religion. You, you cannot talk about religion, you cannot talk about nation, you know? Guys, you cannot talk about this stuff. And you know, this is for me is very important. And uh, uh, <clears throat> thank you so much. Thank you guys, thank you for waiting for me here. I know my, my father gonna smash me when I go home because I know he's gonna smash me. And um, Nevada, sorry. Vegas, sorry. And Alhamdulillah, undisputed, undefeated UFC lightweight champion. Thank you so much. And I'm very proud about, like all media talk about, he take picture with 
uh, with Putin, something like this. He just called me and he said he was oh, very proud of me. I win. And he said, congratulations. And you know, I told you guys, everything I'm gonna change 6 October and I do this. Alhamdulillah, thank you so much. Habib, can you talk about the fight before the brawl? The biggest night ever and I couldn't be more disappointed. You know, you know me, I'm usually mad at everything, you know, but I'm not even mad, I'm, I'm just really disappointed. Dana, um, you, you said that the bus incident was disgusting. The press conference was the darkest press conference ever. Today, you're disappointed. Do you regret using the bus footage, which kind of incensed no, Connor? I mean, but I mean, looking back to kind of how it ended up right now, would, no. you, would you do the same again? I would. Okay. It's uh, part of the story. Yeah. Do you feel, Dana, if you had taken action after the bus incident, like, the, you know, the, the legal process took place, no. but you were adamant you weren't going to do anything. Had you suspended Connor for, you know, X period of time, that you don't think that would have had any no. deterrent had nothing to do with that. He wasn't coming back and saying he wants to jump over the fence because we didn't suspend Connor. Jumped over the fence because Connor's guy was talking shit to him. No, understood. But don't you think that just the fact that it set the tone, like it allowed that to happen, if there had been some. Do you have of, any idea how much money it cost Connor? I don't. The whole if, thing that it's fucking millions of dollars. But the millions. signal, they, they, like Khabib doesn't know that, or Khabib's team doesn't know that. And so they I mean, know the, that. Uh, the argument, I'm, uh, the point I'm making, not an argument, I'm asking you a question, would be. It's a deterrent effect if you say you look in the NFL or wherever they suspended the guys for a period of time. It serves as a deterrent to not other people to not do that same thing. And I guess that's what I'm saying. Had you done taken some action on the UFC part, you violated the code of conduct or whatever you want to say you did. Mm -hmm. Would that not have maybe prevented some of the, the heated stuff that happened in this promotion? I would listen. We didn't. So I don't know. But I would say no. Habib Nurmagomedov is given a nine month suspension and fined $500,000 by the Nevada Athletic Commission. April 13th, 2019, UFC 236, Holloway versus Poirier 2, Atlanta, Georgia. For the first time in his UFC career, the featherweight champ, Max Holloway, will go up in weight to rematch Dustin Poirier. However, this time the stakes will be much higher as the winner will be crowned the new interim UFC lightweight champion. I have a lot of respect for the guy and I'm, you know, uh... As a person, I remember when we when I beat him, he came to the locker room after and started talking to me, um, asking me, if, I guess he read somewhere that I cook a lot and stuff. He's like, so you cook and stuff? He was just a normal down to earth kid, man. Really, you know, really good guy. And, I, and uh, we kind of spoke a little bit at UC 199. We both fought. He fought Lama, so I fought Bobby Green that night. Well, at the media day, we kind of talked a little bit and it was good catching up then. We've never had any animosity towards each other, you know? And uh, like I said, I have a lot of respect for this guy and I understand how good he is. He's on the pound for pound list for a reason, and I'm just excited for the challenge, you know? The Diamond defeats Holloway by decision to become the new interim UFC 155 pound champion. One time I, my mouth was bleeding and I spit, and I spit on him. <laughs> and uh, the ref said, hey, you can't spit on him. And he said, uh, like he knew I, I didn't do it on accident. I didn't like aim at him, but it just might've hit him. Man, it's a fist fight. You might get some spit on you. Uh, when I hit him with a good shot, he would say that, that was good or start clapping. Uh, when I kneed him in the face and, and uh, before he started bleeding, when he picked his head up from the knee, I saw the gash and I said, gotcha. And then uh, yeah, it was it was just it was a it was a battle, man. Yeah. There were time, a couple times he hit me with some good shots. It looked like I was fatigued, but I was hurt um, a couple times against the fence. Um, I just pull myself together, keep my feet under under me and, and keep believing like. I just had to have a second with myself. You know, like those thoughts creep in and I gotta tell myself, don't talk to me like that. And that's what it was. Yeah. Were you surprised at Max's durability? He took some, some heavy, heavy shots from you. Yeah, uh, you know, I was surprised I hurt him that quickly in the first. And it looked like his feet were, his legs were definitely gone. You know, he took some, a couple steps back and started wobbling. And I've seen a lot of Max's fights. I've never seen him really hurt like that. So I, I went a little crazy trying to put him away which has got me in trouble in past fights. Um, but the guy's, so, the guy's so tough, man. Uh, this was my 40th fight tonight, and there's only been two fights that my hands, they're gonna be swollen and hurting tomorrow. There was a Gaethje fight and, and now Max. September 7th, 2019. UFC 242, Habib versus Poirier. Abu Dhabi, United Arab Emirates. The undefeated, lightweight champion Habib Nurmagomedov 
will return from his suspension and defend his title against the interim champion, Dustin Poirier, as the main event at UFC 242. So what's it like? I mean, you're fighting a world champion. You fight a guy that's also undefeated. And according to a lot of people, there isn't anybody in this division that can defeat him. So where, where do you get that motivation from? What's it like to have a team around you that keep you charged up when everybody else is the naysayer? Yeah, uh, I've, I've had naysayers my whole life and overcome the odds. But I have a solid team around me. I feel good. And like I said, man, I'm just in the moment and appreciative of this opportunity. And I will not let it slip, slip through my fingers. I'm here to take full advantage of this, capitalize, and be the undisputed world champion. Saturday night, I have an opportunity to be great. Not many times in your life do the stars align and, and the universe give you an opportunity to truly be great, to get a stadium built in a country across the world you've never been to. And uh, I have an opportunity to be great, and the great ones find a way. And I'm going to find a way Saturday night, baby. The Eagle defeats the Diamond by submission midway through round three. I'm all just wondering if, if maybe against the fence when I got underhooks, if I could have tried a little bit harder to get off the fence, maybe, you know, but that's just questions that I'm gonna have to live with for the rest of my life. I thought for sure he was winning the rounds, obviously, taking me down and dominating, but I felt like he was squeezing hard. We were getting slicker. Uh, I felt like he was getting a little weaker. I coming into this fight, I thought later in the third, fourth and fifth were going to be my rounds. Not that I was planning on giving up the first two, but I knew they were going to be tough. So coming back to the stool after each each of those rounds in the beginning, I uh, wasn't getting up, damaged a whole lot with with shots that were hurting. He cut me. But uh, I thought the deeper we got into the fight, the, the more slick I was going to be able to be. But, uh, you know, that's fighting, man. Stuff is, 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 is tough. I felt like I couldn't get anything going with my stand up. He, he's very awkward. He dips his head and throws uppercuts. We never got into a, an, like an orthodox kickboxing or boxing exchange on the feet. It was all one punch at a time or him dipping and throwing a knee or him dipping and throwing an uppercut. I, I didn't get a rhythm. I felt like the way he's, he was pulling back it was hard for me to set up my, sh my, my combinations and get, in, get into a rhythm. Uh, you know, I know I, I sound like I have a, a lot of excuses, but I was just so prepared, you know, for tonight. This one really hurts. Uh, you know, this was my 41st fight tonight. I'm only 30 years old. I, uh, I've just been through so much in, in my fighting career. It's like, I don't know what's next, you know? I thought, to, honestly, the last 10 weeks of, of training camp and preparing for this fight, I thought the stars were aligning and I thought this was my night, you know? I thought this was like destiny, but I don't want to just keep crying up here in front of you guys, man, but this just means a lot to me. And, uh, you know, to get to get to have a performance like that, and uh, in the moment, I was just waiting for the each round. I thought I was going to start pulling away <sighs> and, and start out pacing him later on in the fight. But he's just so, his balance and uh, his weight distribution against the fence. And then when he's on top, it's, it's so, so strong. Physically, he didn't feel overwhelming. I fought guys that are stronger than him, but skill-wise and balance-wise, he felt really good. I, uh, I just really thought tonight was gonna, I was gonna fly back home to the United States, undisputed world champ. So this really hurts, but I'm gonna go back home and talk to my wife. You know, like I said, I have a lot of tread left on the tires, I feel. I felt good out there tonight. I felt good this whole training camp. I just, I'm not fighting just to fight. You know, I've been fighting to be the world champ, so these opportunities don't come that often. I just need to go back home and and then think about what, yeah, could, the, what could be next for me. January 18th, 2020, UFC 246. McGregor versus Cerrone, Las Vegas, Nevada. Conor McGregor returns to action against veteran Donald Cerrone. Uh, the Mystic Mac prediction of how exactly you get this thing done. You know, 
I've had I've had my back and forth with Donald throughout the years. Right, the last time we spoke to each other, I even saw each other would have been at that press conference many years ago. So much has changed since then. Right, I was the interim featherweight world champion at the time. Uh, Donald predicted I'll, I wouldn't get through Aldo. I got through Aldo. He predicted I was too small for the 155 pound division. I conquered that division. You know, we've had a good back and forth myself and Donald. And as time has gone on. You know, he's become a family man. I've, obviously, you've seen him compete so much, so many times. It's hard not to respect Donald right now at this stage, and he has my respect. And, and although there will be blood spilled on January 18th, it will not be bad blood. And for the Mystic Mac prediction, it will be a KO. <laughs> I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna look to acquire rounds in here. I'm not gonna be in a rush. I'm gonna put pressure on Donald, gonna, gonna hurt Donald. But if he can last, I'll be happy. I'll be happy to acquire rounds in here and then build on these rounds. I feel after the Diaz 2 build up that I had and then the performance I had and the, the bout itself and then leading into the, to the Eddie Alvarez uh, fight, I just felt like I was in prime condition and untouchable. And so I'm looking to acquire that, that, uh, that, that, that time in there again, so um, whichever one comes up first. Like I said, God, God willing, I get out, uh, uns or get out safe the on Saturday night. Whoever's uh, up next, I know a date was mentioned in March. I'm up, I'm up for March also. You're gonna see a lot of me. You know, you're gonna see a lot of me here. So happy days for you all. Also, I know all your eyes are lighting up too. <laughs> McGregor easily finishes off the former title challenger with a TKO in only 40 seconds, and Hans Cerrone his third straight TKO loss. I'm just, you know the way they say, I've just got a left hand. They'll have to say, I've just got a left shoulder as well. A left hand and a left shoulder. The so-called experts of the game, when they, they, they be breaking down my skill set, they'd be saying, I'm just a fighter with a left hand, which is highly disrespectful and uneducated. And I'd be surprised that some of the, so many of the supposedly knowledgeable people, they'd be just claiming it that, as that, so. It's a good shot in the clinch. Um, I see it. You can really catch a man. So um, I knew I caught him with the first one off guard, and then I caught one or two more. And when we separated the nose and the eye was bust. And um, it's a good shot. I've, I've utilized that many times. Okay, the lightweight title will be there, right? That 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 will be there. You know, you see the difference in the physique, the the, the preparation, and that, and. Um, that, that, that will come back around that that shot so I'm certainly not gonna if this fight does go ahead sit out and wait and then wait for a true true holidays and injuries and all this type of thing that goes with it so um the who doesn't matter for me now it's just I'm looking at dates now and I know March was there and um I'm gonna have a look at a calendar and see where we're at and um, Lorenzo gets back in from Panama on Tuesday so we'll toast a fine Irish whiskey with Lorenzo. I always look to do that, you know, a tradition. I was talking with Dana, so he gets back on Tuesday to Vegas, so I'll stay here and I'll go for dinner and a toast with Lorenzo and Dana and I'm sure we'll we'll chat about it then and see what's see what's what. So um I'll be ready. You know, I'll have a celebration tonight. I'll chill with my kids tomorrow. I'll show Junior the fight on the telly, see how he reacts to it, see what he thinks of it. And then back to training. You know, when you take before a fight you taper off for the final two weeks so if you get a quick win and then you kind of go off then all of a sudden it can be four weeks without a full training you know what i mean without a, without a, without a real training session and then you're you've slipped behind again so i'm gonna make sure not to do that and get a good session in the day after tomorrow and carry on june 27th 2020 ufc vegas 4 poirier versus hooker las vegas nevada Dustin Poirier returns to the cage against surging Kiwi Dan Hooker in the main event at the UFC Apex in front of essential personnel only. I honestly think with the win over Dan Hooker, I'll be one fight away from another title shot. When I get into the octagon and stand across from that man, I expect adversity to present itself. And, and it does. And I just know I can suffer and, and push through more than most of these guys. And I believe in my technique and uh, you know, that, that's fighting. It's not, I don't try to line myself up with these kind of crazy matchups and stuff. That's just fighting. Teddy Atlas uh, said that a fight isn't a fight until there's something to overcome. So, you know, I, I've definitely been in some fights. In what MMA fighting named the third best fight of 2020, Poirier defeats Hooker by unanimous decision. January 23rd, 2021. UFC 257. Poirier versus McGregor 2. 
Abu Dhabi, United Arab Emirates. After originally meeting at featherweight, the former interim UFC lightweight champion, Dustin the Diamond Poirier, will rematch the former featherweight and lightweight UFC champion, the notorious Conor McGregor, in a non-title main event for UFC 257 at Etihad Arena in Abu Dhabi. You're listening to the Vox Media Podcast Network.